we're going to take a look at one of the problems from OpenAI Gym. For those of you who don't know, OpenAI Gym is a toolkit for training reinforcement learning models. The example we're going to look at is the cart pole balancing problem. Cart pole is a simulation of an inverted pendulum on top of a frictionless cart. At each time step, you can take one of two actions. You can either move the cart left or you can move it right. The aim of the problem is to keep the pole balanced upright for as long as possible. Let's take a look. Using the Python API, we're going to run the simulation over a number of time steps. Then with the render function, we're able to visualize the cart at each time step. We have created something called a policy function. This decides which action to take at each step. In this example, we have a fixed policy where we just move the cart left each time. This action is represented by zero. We can switch it to one to make it move right each time. As you can see, it falls over pretty quickly. For each action, the simulation is updated and the state of the environment is returned, along with the associated reward for that state. We can look inside the environment's doc string for more detail on this. Observation is simply the properties of the cart pole at the given point in time. This is made up of four things, the position of the cart, its velocity, the angle of the pole, and the velocity of the pole at its tip. This is simply returned as an array of four continuous numbers. We also have a description of the two actions that I mentioned earlier. The other thing that the environment returns is the reward. This is simply one whenever the angle of the pole is less than 12 degrees and zero otherwise. And basically, the entire aim of this problem is to come up with a policy function that's able to maximize the total expected long-term reward. A very simple solution is a policy function that moves the car in the direction that the pole is moving. This way, the center of gravity of the pole is kept above the cart. However though, this solution requires an understanding of the mechanics behind the environment and doesn't generalize to other problems. So what we're going to look at is something called Q-learning. Q-learning is a type of model-free reinforcement learning. It can be applied to any finite state Markov decision process. Finite state process means that the environment has a fixed number of discrete actions and states. However, as we have seen, the cart pole problem has a continuous state space. So the first thing we need to do is convert these continuous observations into discrete ones. We'll simply do this by dividing the state space into discrete buckets. For this, we're going to use scikit-learn's k-bins discretizer. For now, we're going to ignore the cart position and the cart velocity and just look at the pole angle and the pole velocity. We're going to divide these two variables into 6 and 12 bins respectively. Next, we'll create a tensor for storing our Q values. There is a cell in the tensor for every action and state combination. The value of the cell will represent the expected long-term reward if that action is taken when in that particular state. We can now create a very simple policy function. All we need to do is select the action that has the highest Q value for a given state. But we still don't know what the Q values are yet. To learn these values, what we're going to do is use our policy function and then update the values based on the reward of the outcome. Specifically, we calculate it as the reward of the action taken plus the maximum expected reward for the new state we're in. However, we don't want to learn too much from one individual action. So we use a learning rate to weight the old Q value with the new one. We use a decaying learning rate so we can learn more quickly at the start of the simulation and slower towards the end. We also have something called the exploration rate. This is the proportion of random actions that we want to insert. By doing this, we can help explore the state space. Now we have everything we need to start learning our Q values. We're going to run 10,000 simulations. And for each episode, we're going to reset the environment, and then we're going to run the simulation until the pole has fallen over. Here we use the Q value policy to decide on our action. Then with our exploration rate, we insert a random action every now and again. Next, we increment the time step. Then finally, we update the Q value as a weighted combination of the old Q value and the learned value. As you can see, it starts off pretty poorly. But over time, it will learn better and better estimations of the Q value and be able to stay upright for longer. And that's about it for this example. 
And the great thing about this type of approach is that it can be applied to a whole host of different problems from chess games to robotics, or maybe you have a simulation of your customer base and you want to work out what the best policy for some type of interaction with them is. I just wanted to thank Sean Satio for his article on vitoshacademy.com. Uh, that's where I first came across this approach. Uh, I'll include the link in the description of this video. Check it out. Thanks.